One of the things I like to do when I test my blood sugar is to set up contrasts. Sometimes I test myself with a high-carb food, and then the next day, under the same exact conditions, I'll test myself about an hour after eating a low-carb food. Now, in this test, I'm going to contrast two high-carb foods, but they're two very different foods. Actually, we really couldn't call this a food, could we? <laughs> Most people would call it candy, but it is something people put in their mouths, chew it up, and then send it down into their stomachs. So I guess, in some way, it's a food. No matter what dietary discipline you may practice, almost every diet, whether it's low-carb, vegetarian, South Beach, or any other diet, you name it, they will all condemn the candy bar and candy in general. And yet, despite the almost universal condemnation of candy bars, you will still see them all over the place as you wait in line at the grocery store or convenience store. And in direct contradiction to the candy bar is the banana. Bananas have lots of potassium and other vitamins and minerals. They're a fruit. <laughs> They're surely one of the most healthy foods you can eat, right? But what many don't realize is that bananas have a lot of sugar. Granted, it's natural sugar, but it is still sugar, and it therefore has the ability to raise your blood sugar. Now, it just so happens that the banana and this candy bar have about an equal amount of carbohydrates in them. They're both around 28 grams of carbs. And what we want to see in this test is how much of a difference will it make in their blood sugar raising capacity that one of them is fruit and the other is candy. Well, it's breakfast time, and for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to eat two bananas today as my breakfast. <laughs> that will give me somewhere between 55 and 60 grams of carbs, which is quite a, a lot of carbs. At least it is for me. Tomorrow, around this same time, I'll eat two of the candy bars, and we'll compare and contrast the results of how high they're going to send my blood sugar. That they will both raise blood sugar quite a bit, I do not doubt. But the question is, is there any advantage of fruit over candy when it comes to raising blood sugar, when their carbohydrates are just about equal? Well, we're going to find out. I tested my blood sugar a few minutes ago, and it was at 106. How high will it go? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to enjoy my banana breakfast, and then we'll come back in about an hour and see just what these two bananas, these nearly 60 grams of carbs, have done to my blood sugar. Actually, I couldn't wait an hour to test myself, so I decided to test my blood sugar at 30 minutes, and then again after one hour. At the 30-minute mark, my blood sugar had risen to a whopping 192. Clearly, these two bananas were doing a real number on my blood sugar. At the one-hour mark, my blood sugar had risen even higher. Now it stood at 222, about the highest I can ever remember it. And it was all due to two harmless-looking, vitamin and mineral-filled, pretty yellow bananas. Wow! What will the candy bars do to me tomorrow? Stay tuned. Okay, it's one day later, and I'm still in shock over that high number that I received from eating those two bananas. I knew it would raise my blood sugar. I did not know it would raise it that much. It went from 106 to 222 in one hour. And if anyone has questions as to whether I have uh, insulin resistance, uh, they need not question anymore. <laughs> that surely proves it. Today, it's even scarier. Uh, these candy bars have almost the exact same carbs as a banana. Uh, they, a banana, a large to medium banana, has about 28 grams of carbs. These candy bars have about 28 grams of carbs. So I'm carbs. So I'm going to eat two of them, and that should be 56 grams of carbs. That's a lot more carbs than I normally would eat. But I'm going to do it. Wait an hour, test myself, and compare two bananas versus two candy bars. Same amount of carbs. Fiber is going to be different. I imagine the results will be a little different. The truth is I would expect the candy bars will raise my blood sugar higher than the bananas, and that's scary. But I got to do it. So 
Excuse me while I have my breakfast of two Hershey's cookies and cream candy bars, 56 grams of carbs total. And we'll get back in about an hour and let you know how it came out. My trusty timer has just told me that it's been an hour since I finished that second candy bar. We're going to see how it does, especially in comparison with the bananas. Uh, both have a lot of sugar. It's not a good thing. It's not a fun thing for me to do this, but I have to do it. So let's see what two candy bars, about 56 grams of carbs, will do to my blood sugar and my blood sugar levels. One hour after eating those two candy bars, 56 grams of carbs, my blood sugar went to 169. Now that's curious to me. Uh, I don't quite understand it. I assumed that the candy would raise my blood sugar higher than the bananas. Uh, it didn't do that. It's actually lower than it was yesterday. The bananas went to a whopping 222. This went to 169. So two candy bars I processed better and more efficiently than two bananas. Uh, go figure. One thing I've learned in testing blood sugar is that there are always going to be surprises. No matter how much you've done it, uh, there will be some surprises. So I started at 106, went to 169. That's a 63 point rise, which is a lot and is way too much. And I won't be eating two candy bars for breakfast probably ever again in my life, <laughs> but it wasn't as much as two bananas. I've got to process this a little bit and think about it, and I'll get back to you with some final thoughts. I have to admit, this test was a shocker. I was almost certain that the candy bars would raise my blood sugar a lot higher than the bananas, but it didn't prove to be the case. Let's review the test. Eating two bananas as a breakfast, not having eaten since the previous evening, I obtained these results. Before the meal, my blood sugar was at 106. After 30 minutes, it had risen to 192. And one hour after eating the bananas, it rose still higher to 222. Now, I knew the bananas would raise my blood sugar significantly, but I didn't know they would raise it that high. The next day, as a breakfast, I ate two Hershey bars. At 28 grams of carbs per bar, they seemed to be a very close match to the carbohydrate content of the bananas. Before the meal, my blood sugar was once again 106. But 30 minutes after finishing the candy bars, it had risen to 151, which was my first clue that the candy was affecting my blood sugar less than the bananas. And at the one hour mark, my blood sugar rose to 169. So with the bananas, there was a 116 point rise. And with the candy bars, there was a 63 point rise. So how do I explain this? I really can't, but I can make a couple of points. First, measuring the carbs in fruit is never as exact as with processed foods. Fruit comes in different sizes and sometimes with varying degrees of sweetness. Looking back on the results of this test, I'd have to guess that those bananas had more carbohydrates in them than the candy bars. Now, in order to make this a truly scientific test, I would have to repeat the test many times, and I'm not about to do that. I've abused my body enough with these two high-carb breakfasts as it is, and I'm eager to get back to my traditional low-carb breakfasts. So, what does this test teach us? Well, first, I learned that, for me, bananas are a real problem when it comes to raising blood sugar. Now, I already knew that, but it has been driven home far more forcefully after these two tests. But remember, we're all different in regard to our ability to process sugars and carbs. The results may not be at all the same for you, but for me, and I would think for most diabetics, bananas are problematic, to say the least. And that goes for most fruit. The truth is, fruit does not get a free pass just because it contains more vitamins and nutrients than many other foods. What profit is it to a man or a woman to get that extra calcium in the bananas while they drive their blood sugar crazy and damage their bodies? Now, there is some encouragement in this little experiment, and it's the same thing I've been saying in my books and in nearly every diabetes video we produce. The encouragement is this, we can make a difference in how high our blood sugar rises. We're not helpless victims who have no say in the matter. Nobody forced me to eat those two bananas or those two candy bars. I chose to do it 
and the consequences were runaway blood sugar. But what if instead I had eaten two avocados or two celery sticks filled with cream cheese? Do you suppose I would have seen better numbers? You better believe I would. Well, let me conclude with this observation. Testing your post-meal blood sugar levels after eating particular meals and foods is such a tremendous motivator. When you see those bad numbers, you immediately want to do something about it, if possible. And the good news is, it is possible. So do some research. Start testing your blood sugar about an hour after finishing your meals and see what they're doing to you. If you make this your practice, you're on your way to seeing victory in this area of runaway blood sugar. If you found this video helpful, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel and then click the little bell icon which will enable you to get notifications each time we post a new video. And remember to click the thumbs up like icon. This causes YouTube to rank the video higher in its search engine and more people will be able to see it. Well, that's it for now. God bless and see you again soon.